Dependable Diesels for the Budget Operator, on this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. There's no doubt that today's O-Gauge three-rail diesels by Lionel, MTH, Atlas, and others are impressive. With scale dimensions and details, realistic sounds and smoke, and command control, these models represent the zenith of toy train technology. But as impressive as these features are, the price tag associated with them makes many potential hobbyists abandon toy trains due to a lack of funds. But as I often stress on this channel, you can have fun with three rail trains without breaking the bank, especially if you can get by without all the bells and whistles, pun intended, of modern model trains. So whether you are brand new to the hobby or are just looking to expand your current toy train empire, I present to you my list of the best budget diesel locomotives for the beginning hobbyist. To complete this list, I considered three factors. First, the diesels must be regularly available in good running condition for under $150. To help establish this criteria, I consulted published price guides as well as data from closed eBay auctions over the past 60 days. This data shows actual sales, not what the seller listed the item for, as asking prices may or may not reflect actual market demand. I checked for sales of powered locomotives in running condition and excluded those that were listed as not tested, need repairs, or other problems. I also ignored models with only one or two sales in this price range as being atypical. Sale prices at small local shows should be similar, while large traveling show vendors and brick and mortar stores may charge somewhat more to cover overhead costs. Second, the models must be dependable runners. And third, the models are generally easy to maintain or repair. So clearly this list is based purely on my opinion, and if you have your own favorites in this category, feel free to share them in the comments. More in-depth explorations of many of these models are available by following the links at the end of this video or links found in the video description. And so, in no particular order, here we go. The first model in my list is the K-Line MP15. This model was made from the mid-1980s through the early 2000s, and it came in a variety of versions. The models are scale-sized, they feature twin can motors, headlight, operating couplers at each end, and three-position reversing. Some versions are equipped with horns as well. The MP15 came both in starter sets and as a separate sale item. Similar in appearance to the EMD SW1500 switcher, this model will look right at home on any layout that focuses on the 1960s up through today. With few exceptions, these models can be found today priced in the $75 to $100 range. The Kennecott Copper version, seen here, is generally the best bargain. Originally offered as a premium for members of the K-Line Collectors Club, Hobbyists were able to receive both an annual membership and an MP15 for only $50, a bargain that few could refuse, and as a result, there are many KCC MP15s available today. While the model was last produced two decades ago, it is very low maintenance, dependable, and in the worst case scenario of requiring parts, there are many MP15s out there from which parts may be pulled. Staying with K-Line, the next model on my list is the K-Line Alco S2 Switcher. Based on Mark's tooling from the 1950s, K-Line upgraded this neat model with added details, improved trucks, and twin can motors, which make this little switcher a great puller for its size. The S2 was made to be compatible with Mark's 3 16th scale or roughly 1 64th scale cars, so it is undersized for O scale, However, it looks great with undersized O27 cars like Lionel Scout-inspired boxcars or K-Line's updated Marks cars that were found in many of their starter sets. I have heard that the trucks on the S2 can be a little stiff, making the locomotive prone to derailments on steep grades, 
but otherwise the S2 is a dependable runner. The little Alco was standard power for bottom end starter sets, as well as for the many special edition license sets that K-Line produced for Procter & Gamble, Ace Hardware, and dozens of other companies. Oddly, despite its small size and common availability, most S2 models sell for more than comparable condition MP15 diesels, perhaps because they appeal to marks as well as Lionel operators, or because people just find them cute. Whatever the reason, one can expect to find S2s for sale in the $90 to $150 range for most versions. Like the MP15, the CAN motor drivetrain is low maintenance, and between the large number of K-Line and Marx versions available, repair parts are not difficult to find. Next, we have the Lionel GP38, or sometimes labeled a GP38-2. In reality, the shell models neither, as it actually is based on a less common but similar looking GP39-2. Introduced in 1991, the GP38 features twin CAN motors, scale dimensions, headlight, two operating couplers, and most versions have horns. Contemporary versions with Lionel's Lion Chief or other added electronics are priced higher. The GP38 has been a common element of middle and upper end starter sets since the 1990s. And since versions of the locomotive are still in production, many parts are readily available. Conventional GP38s are generally priced near the upper range of our scale, between $125 and $150. The version decorated for the Lionel Railroaders Club, however, is often bargain priced at $75 or below, likely for similar reasons as the K-Line Kennecott Copper MP15 discount. Real GP38s and GP38-2s were the most common locomotives on American railroads from the late 1960s through the early 1990s, and many are still in regular service today, so they will look right at home on many layouts. Similar in price and features to the GP38 is the Lionel Alco RS3. This model, introduced in 1988, features scale dimensions and generally features twin can motors, a headlight, and operating couplers at each end. Recent production Lion Chief versions are priced higher. There were also some stripped down versions of the locomotive produced, such as for the Lionel construction set. In addition to the construction set locomotive, bargains can also be found with the Sue Line version of the model. These are often priced below $75, while most conventional control RS3s are found in the $125 to $150 range in good condition. RS3s were a common sight on U.S. railroads from the late 1950s through the early 1970s, but some do survive on short lines and tourist lines today. Next on my list is the Lionel General Electric U36B. When first issued in 1974, these semi-scale diesels featured a single Pullmore-style motor on a sheet metal frame with two operating couplers and three-position reverse. Reissues in the 1990s and later feature twin CAN motors, similar to the RS3, and improved electronics, and these models are priced above our target range. Early issue U36Bs and their U36C six-axle variants are often found priced in the $75 to $125 range, with a few versions trending higher, such as the Mickey Mouse Express locomotive. Frisco versions are the best bargains, often coming in as low as $50. While not necessarily the best pullers, the U36 offers modelers a change of pace from the usual EMD Jeep offerings on a budget layout. And speaking of Jeeps, next we have the Lionel Jeep 7, Jeep 9, Jeep 20 line of locomotives. All of these are based on the GP7 and have similar operating features, so I'm putting all of these together in the same category. From their introduction in the 1950s through the early 1990s, these models all featured a single Pullmore-style motor and sheet metal frame, just like with the U36, usually with two operating couplers, a headlight, and pre-position reverse. Some versions had horns, and these are priced a little higher. Also priced on the higher end are more recent versions with twin CAN motors 
improved sound systems, and sometimes Lion Chief or TMCC command control. Conventional versions can usually be found for under $150, with the post-war versions in good condition generally commanding a little bit more than their MPC-era counterparts. Bargains in the line include the Long Island Santa Fe and Burger King GP20s, as well as the early blue Santa Fe GP7s, and these models can often be found for as low as $50. The Jeeps are solid runners, and with half a century of production behind them, there are plenty of repair parts available. And that brings us to a model with a large variety of versions and features, the Lionel NW2 Switcher. When introduced in 1949, the NW2 was a top-shelf model featuring scale dimensions, a single pull-more motor, two operating couplers, magnet traction, three-position reverse, and a die-cast frame. These models have excellent detail and are superior runners. By the early 1950s, however, the model had lost detail, and the die-cast frame replaced with a sheet metal and a two-position reverse often replaced the three-position, and sometimes even a headlight was lacking. Most MPC-era NW2s are made similarly, although some are stripped down a little bit more with non-operating couplers as well. These 1950s through 1990s version of the NW2 are nearly all valued at less than $100. While lacking in details, they still provide dependable, inexpensive operation in a scale-dimensioned package. Due to the large number of variations, one should carefully review the operating and detail features of a particular model before purchasing. Recent versions feature modern CAN motors and upgraded electronic sounds and control, and of course, these can be priced higher. Speaking of model variations, perhaps no model has undergone more extreme changes than the Lionel Alco FA. When introduced in 1950, the FA was a premium, full-featured model. By 1965, many FAs were offered without even a reverse mechanism. Early FAs feature pull-more motors, die-cast frames, headlights, horns, and three-position reverse units. These are some of the best running diesels Lionel ever produced. While excellent and mint examples command premium prices, average condition operating examples can often be found paired with matching dummy models for under $150. By the mid-1950s, these models were redesigned with sheet metal frames and shared the same motor assembly as the cheaper NW2 models. Most now featured two-position reversing and a headlight. Some still had horns, and many powered versions now featured only a single rear coupler with a closed pilot in the front. MPC versions of the 1970s and 1980s generally followed this same pattern, and these mid-grade models are still dependable runners and can usually be found in the $75 to $125 range. In the 1960s, Lionel often featured the FA in bargain basement uncatalog sets for mass retailers. These FAs featured the same motors as their mid-priced brethren, but were stripped of features, often even lacking a reverse mechanism, like this forward-only number 1055 Texas Special. Similar low-budget versions include the number 221 models and various road names. With no features to speak of, these models are usually priced less than $50 in good condition. Still, if you want to just run trains and don't care about the features, these models are dependable if basic runners and replacement parts are abundant. More recent issues of the FA feature CAN motors and upgraded electronics, and of course, these are priced higher. Contrasting with Lionel's FA is the K-Line Alco FA. While many believe these are knockoffs of the Lionel versions, K-Lines are actually based on original Kusan tooling and show significant differences in the body castings. K-Lines FAs feature twin CAN motors, three-position reverse, headlight, front and rear operating couplers, and sometimes horns. Powered and dummy pairs were often featured in top-tier K-Line starter sets, and were also available for separate sale, sometimes as a three-pack with a matching caboose. 
These models are excellent runners and pullers, and most AA pairs can be found for under $150. Later production versions with improved sound systems are priced higher. Like the other K-Line models on the list, these are dependable diesels and feature low-maintenance operation. Like Lionel's FA, these K-Line models are undersized for O-Scale, but they look great pulling traditional O27 passenger or freight cars. Last, and perhaps least, on this list is the Lionel Postwar 44-ton switcher. This model is extremely oversized for O-Scale, and it's essentially a stripped-down Jeep locomotive with a different shell. Most versions feature three-position reverse, a headlight, and magnet traction, but some models have non-operating couplers. Originally offered between 1956 and 1958, the model was reissued several times over the next three decades with similar features. There is a modern version of the 44-tonner. As always, these are generally priced beyond our target range. While Excellent examples of the B&O and Burlington 44-tonners may be priced above our target range. Most of the 44-tonners are priced close to the low end of that GP7, GP9 market. Lehigh Valley versions are generally the cheapest, often selling for as low as $50. So there you have it, my list of dependable budget diesel locomotives. Whether you want post-war or contemporary, scale or traditional sized, there are diesels available for every type of layout. Did I forget your favorite? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and tell your neighbors. So pick up a budget diesel for your roster and keep the trains running. And we'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.